Hello and welcome to another video by C. Anderson English. I'm going to be going over Seamus Heaney's follower. If the video is helpful, please subscribe and give it the thumbs up. Let's go. The first thing to really talk about is that when you annotate poetry, often students say to me, did the poet mean that? Is that just you an English teacher going over in too much detail? And the answer is that the examiners are interested in students understanding that the writer um, has made choices. And so anything the writer has done to create meaning is worth annotating. Anything that is a conscious decision. And also for students to understand that texts are conscious constructs, to understand that they are um, pieces of work that have been thought over and poured over and that there is a level of artistry to doing that and that it's not just um, random that certain choices have been made. Um, so to understand this, the themes in this um, poem, I want you to think about what it's like to be the son or daughter of someone who is really famous or really expert at whatever it is they do. So here you have Madonna's daughter, you have the Beckhams with Brooklyn Beckham there. And I want to focus on this example because he's entered, um, Jaden Smith has um, chosen to enter the same field as his father in terms of acting. And would you like to be Jaden Smith? That's a, a genuine question. Do you think that all the fame and the money and the wealth would be worth it? Or do you think there might be some negatives to that? Do you think that you might struggle to form your own identity or forge your own identity when you have such a huge um, parent? So that's something to think about, the relationship between a parent who is well known and your own identity as a um, offspring of that of that parent. Okay, so in order to understand the poem um, Follower by Seamus Heaney, you have to understand that it's based around manual ploughing. Now, I'm from London, I don't really have much experience of that, but um, I can understand the idea of you know, the idea of turning the earth over and trying to get it ready for um, producing soil or crops, soil, producing crops. And I think that's what you need to understand, the idea of a man trying to control a horse using a horse-drawn plough. Okay, so let's get into the poem. So it starts off by saying, my father worked with a horse plough. Um, and I think that this word here in itself is an interesting word. Okay, so father, what are the connotations of that word father? I was saying to my class the other day, what I would usually do is use the word dad. So you might say that is a slightly distant way of describing his father. It's debatable. Um, certainly you got slight possession there with the my. My father worked with a horse plough, a very straightforward and simple sentence. His shoulders, and then we've got some description of his father, his shoulders globed. So you have the idea of them being rounded. You might want to um, think about the reference to Atlas, who had to carry the globe as a punishment. Um, and it says his shoulders globed like a full sail strung. And this simile here is interesting. So when you have a boat and you have its sail fully um, completed by the wind, that's what his shoulders look like. So you have this interesting um, introduction to nautical, which means related to the sea, nautical imagery. And it's powerful. It's not just any um, example. It's the idea of a full sail strung. So you have also the sibilance here, which I think is worth noting. You have this constant s s sound. You have shafts. You have strained. And lots of people say different things about that. It might mimic the sound of cutting through the earth. Um, people often relate sibilance to some kind of evil in terms of it sounding a bit like a, you know, like a snake or a serpent or something like that. But that's something to think about the use of sibilance, um, which is a type of alliteration here. Okay, his shoulders globe like a full sail strung. Now, mind my um, my writing, I'm doing my best to work with this uh, tablet. His shoulders globe like a full sail strung. So you get this sense of power from this. Between the shaft and the furrow, between the shaft, so these are the grooves. Um, between the shaft, sorry, that's actually the, the length of the, um, of the earth. Between the shaft and the furrow, the horse strained 
at his clicking tongue. Now, I'm not going to go over every single word in this, but I'll go over enough for you to understand the poem, the, the main messages. So this idea of being powerful is reinforced by the fact that the horse strained at his clicking tongue. And what you get here is um, the fact that you have this really strong, huge animal, um, and that just by clicking his tongue, just this, this tiny kind of action, the horse will really exert itself. So this, again, demonstrates his power and also demonstrates the level of control that he has over the horse. Somehow he has mastered the horse. So you get a sense of him being um, expert and adept at what he does. This is then really clearly um, reinforced by the short sentence here, an expert. And it says that, you know, the short sentence emphasizes that there's not too much to be said about that. It's very blatant. It's like Heaney is saying, well, here I'll describe how great he is, but I'm just going to spell it out for you here, an expert. He would set the wing and fit the bright steel pointed sock. These are um, technical terms to do with the plow. Um, the sod rolled over without breaking at the head rig with a single pluck and then it goes on enjambment. But this bit here, again, I think is another line that has meaning worth noting. The idea that the sod rolled over the earth rolled over the people often say people sometimes say oh gosh you rolled over easily it's, it, it can be a colloquial phrase maybe it's more of a modern colloquial phrase but it can be a way of describing someone who kind of acquiesces or submits too easily so i'll put here i'll put submission perhaps the earth itself is giving in to the father because he's so powerful the sod rolled over without breaking. Okay, so here again demonstrates the skill that he has in ploughing. That he can do something quite difficult, but he can do it perfectly. So I'll put perfect. Okay. And again, you have this emphasis. Um, I'm going to try and... I've got all these different colours going on, but... I think I'm going to go red here. It's two things I think are worth noting. that he, he The horse strained with his clicking tongue, and then he can do things with a single pluck. So I think what's significant here is the ease with which he is able to do his job. Um, he's really comfortable, and he's really adept. He says, at the head rig, with a single pluck of the reins. And I think this is a good example of how the enjambment is effective here, the fact that it just says single pluck emphasises the ease of which he's able to do that because the of reins comes off over here, or ends over here comes off. Um, so the, the enjambment here really emphasises again the ease of which he's able to do that. So I'll just put here enjambment. When you are um, commenting on techniques, it's always important that you don't just list them, you don't just say this is enjambment, this is sibilance, or whatever it might be. Comment on the effect. In this particular case, as I've just said, the enjambment is here to emphasise the, the skill that the father has. The sweating team turned around, sorry, at the head rig with a single pluck of reins. The sweating team, again, the horses are sweating for him. Not only are they straining, but they're sweating. Team turned around and back into the land. So he works and they go straight back to doing what they need to do. His eye, again you have the enjambment here. Why do you think he cuts the sentence off there? You might want to pause the video and think about that. His eye narrowed and angled at the ground, mapping the furrow exactly. Okay, And that again clearly links in with him being an expert and being perfect at what he does. His eye narrowed and angled at the ground, mapping the furrow exactly. So um, you get a sense of him being almost like a computer, you know, he is, he's perfect, he's able to narrow and angle the eye, you can imagine him going low, mapping the furrow exactly. So, I don't want to go over in too much detail, I think there's a lot of information here. I think that what I would say is that um, overall, these three stanzas, the function of them 
is really to portray the father as someone that you would like to emulate, someone that you want to look up to, someone who is an expert, who is skilled, all the things I've said already. And this is the first part of the video. What I'll do is I'll go over the second part of this poem. But I want you to be aware of the tonal shift and how at this point there is nothing negative that has been said about the father. In fact, it is positively all good. OK, so please watch part two. Please subscribe if you found this video helpful. And you'll see here more videos that from my channel that you can view to help you with your GCCs or Key Stage 3 or Key Stage 5 or whatever it might be.